Good morning, everyone. And Excellencies, children, I'm very, very pleased to be here today. I'm coming from New York just this week to spend some time with you and to hear your dreams and your plans for the future. Um, and I'm very encouraged by what I've heard. You are very impressive to you for young people. And um, this country is very fortunate to have you uh, working so closely together with government uh, and with your families uh, to make um, Turkey a uh, truly child rights respecting country. Um, I'm here today also to share with you some of the uh, most recent information about child participation rights um, and some of the new guidance that has been provided by the Committee on the Rights of the Child in Geneva. Um, this guidance will be uh, very helpful to us as we work this afternoon and tomorrow uh, and over the next weeks in developing a national strategy for child participation. So I wanted to take a few moments this morning to review with you the international legal foundation for our work in promoting the rights of children to participate in all matters affecting them. Um, let's look at Article 12. Article 12 is the keystone or the cornerstone article regarding the rights of children to participate in society. And it states, let's just read it carefully together. States' parties shall assure to the child who is capable of forming his or her own views the right to express those views freely in all matters affecting the child, the views of the child being given due weight in accordance with the age and maturity of the child. This is a breakthrough landmark concept in international human rights. And we're very pleased to be working with you to realize this right for children here in Turkey. However, many governments have found it very complicated and very uh, unclear how to implement this uh, Article 12 and related articles. Um, over the last 20 years or since the convention has been approved, many governments have uh, established uh, various um, programs on child participation, but there are still a lot of questions as to what is our responsibility as government? What is our responsibility as children? What is our responsibility as parents to ensure that children have the possibility of forming their own views and expressing those views freely? So last week, the Committee on the Rights of the Child with the support of UNICEF and other international children's organizations issued a set of guidelines on how to um, implement the provision in Article 12. Part of the guideline indicates the situations within which Article 12 is particularly important. The committee has identified 12 settings in which the um, uh, right to participation is, uh, should be supported by government and, and uh, civil society. I would like to review with you those 12 settings and then we will consider them during our group work this afternoon. I, I'm right about that. Right? Then we're going to consider these 12 settings and exchange, have an exchange of views about how here in Turkey we can ensure that children's rights to participation um, are met in, in these various contexts. So let's take a look at the 12 situations referred to by the Committee on the Rights of the Child. Firstly, in the family. The committee recognizes that the family is the ideal framework for the first democratic experience for children. That is a very powerful idea, that the principles of democracy should also pertain in the context of family relationships. In relevant legislation, the committee suggests that definitions of parents and guardians should include an obligation to listen to children and to give children attention to their views, give attention to the views of children, in accordance, of course, with their age and maturity. So when we're considering public policy and future legislation regarding matters of family uh, consideration, 
we should consider the opportunity to reflect the fact that parents also and guardians have an obligation to listen to children. In alternative care, uh, children's ombudspersons or commissioners, or in the case here in Turkey, the, the parliamentarians who are performing an ombuds function, should be able to monitor the situation of children in residential care facilities through announced and unannounced visits. We should be able to visit any time and see what is happening with children there. I know I understand at the coffee break that there have been some very important visits with children in detention and in other um, residential facilities. And this is an important role and function for uh, parliamentarians and for government. There should be a representative council of children with a mandate to participate in the development of policy and rules of these institutions. So even children in detention, even children in residential care, have a right to sit down with the managers of these facilities and discuss the issues and talk about together how these institutions are being managed. In the situation of health care, again, children should be provided with information about proposed treatments and children should have access access to confidential medical counseling and advice. Now this has been a controversial issue because many governments feel, and parents feel, that children should only be given um, health treatments with the consent of the family. That may be true, but in addition, children should be able to seek medical guidance and advice. It may be, they may have a situation where they would like to speak confidentially to, let's say, an older child, an adolescent, or a younger child would like to share their, some of their health concerns, their feelings about their physical or mental well-being with health professionals um, just to get some idea of, of some information about what's going on with them. And children have the right to have access to um, confidential medical counseling and advice. In the situation of education, one of the most important sectors um, for the implementation of children's rights to participation the committee is truly concerned about the continuing authoritarianism, discrimination, and violence which characterizes schooling in so many countries all over the world. The committee feels that schools should become places which embody the philosophy of respect for children and for their rights. Governments have an obligation to ensure access to human rights education both in the provision of courses, for instance, the children have asked for a course on child rights to be included in their curriculum, and in the manner in which the schools are managed and administrated. So the schools themselves should, man should be manifestations of the principles of children's rights in the way they are managed, in the way they are organized, and the way in which education professionals interact with children. This is where children and young people learn how to negotiate, how to express themselves. Their skills, uh, their citizenship skills, their civic engagement skills are developed primarily in the context of the schools. In a situation of play and recreation, governments are urged to provide children, uh, children participation in, in play and recreation, in culture, and in the arts, and through the introduction of child-friendly environments and accessible facilities for all children. Uh, we need to give particular attention, of course, to children with physical and mental disabilities. They, too, need to have accessible play, recreation, cultural, and arts uh, experiences. In the community, the Committee on the Rights of the Child is encouraged by the positive experiences in many countries, including Turkey, um, to provide opportunities for children to participate in the parliament and with uh, and other forums at national, regional, and local levels, which establish formal links between children and decision makers. And we've been talking about the importance of having um, a strengthening structure of communication between children and decision makers. In local and national government, the committee is urging governments to move away from the events-based approach, where children are involved in ceremonial meetings, and, more, and move toward a systematic inclusion of 
children's participation in policy making. And we can discuss this afternoon how we might work together to create such um, communication mechanisms so that children can have more direct um, relationship with policy makers. In monitoring mechanisms, this can be achieved through involvement of children's ombudsmen or commissioners. Or in the case here in Turkey, we have the parliamentary committee, which has a very powerful and important ombuds function. And through consultative processes involving schools and local councils. They can undertake consultation, develop questionnaires with children, and disseminate the questionnaires and the findings through the internet, through children's media, and through children's organizations. So children's media also has an important role to play to facilitate communication between children and policy makers. In civil proceedings, Article 9 of the Convention requires that in any proceedings uh, to consider separating children, from his or her parents, all interested parties must be given an opportunity to participate. In this instance, the committee is, is saying also that all interested parties include children. So children should have the opportunity to express their views about where they would like to be placed, how they would like to be placed, uh, and, and have those views respected by social workers and by the courts. In the juvenile justice system, at every stage of the process of the juvenile justice system, um, children should have access to specialized legal aid support systems, including interpretation where necessary. There may be a situation that some children do not speak the official language quite so well, and they need some help in making their views known to the, um, to the authorities who are in the process of making decisions about where to place them. The juvenile justice system is very important. I, I, I know that we're very familiar and very concerned about the system here in Turkey, so um, we're quite confident that, uh, that we're making progress in this area. In the area of child protection, a particular attention should be given to children in situations of exploitation, including children who spend their days and nights on the streets, and children who are working. Their views, we have to find a way to make sure that their views are also taken into account. Sometimes, even in administrative proceedings related to their personal situation. Um, sometimes the children who are working are um, uh, find themselves in conflict with the law or there are legal decisions being made about the, the, um, the quality and um, conditions in which they're working. Children's, those views of those children should also be taken into account. And finally, in situations of emergencies and armed conflict, children should be provided with all relevant information about their entitlements, about their services, about asylum processes, and the situation in their country of origin. Also, a guardian or advisor should be provided free of charge to children who are thus affected by um, perhaps being displaced by natural, natural disasters, or being displaced by in situations of armed conflict. So these are the 12 settings within which um, the uh, Article 12 and the rights of children to express their views um, and have their views taken seriously should be addressed by government and by the children themselves. The, these guidelines um, will be shared widely with governments over the next uh, few weeks. And the, the Committee on the Rights of the Child will expect these guidelines or, or these provisions to be included in the reports of the uh, government to the Committee on the Rights of the Child. And I understand that Turkey is in the, government, is in the process of preparing the next committee, the, the next report to the Committee on the Rights of the Child. So the committee will expect to hear from you about you know, the situation and the plans uh, for the future on how we intend to ensure the rights of children uh, to participate freely in these contexts and other contexts. There may be other situations here in Turkey where you may want to also reflect on how to ensure that children have um, a formal and systematic opportunity to have their views um, shared. Now, let me comment finally on the role of the Child Rights Committees. Uh, the children have been um, discussing here these last days 
of the, about the need to uh, to continue their roles and their responsibilities, uh, to extend the awareness raising activities to reach more children and more families. The children have uh, said clearly that uh, they want all children in Turkey, all families in Turkey, to know about children's rights. The children you have talked about reaching teachers with training on children's rights. And in these activities, you are demonstrating that children can be duty bearers as well as rights holders. One of the important aspects of participation uh, rights. The children, you all have talked about making your committees more inclusive uh, to reach out to children with disabilities and children without adequate parental care who may be working or even living in the streets. In this way, you, the children, are reflecting the values of the campaign that's currently taking place in Europe to make European societies more inclusive by identifying those who are normally excluded and making a special effort to break down the barriers that keep them apart from uh, you in the, the current uh, setup of the committees. The committees, the children in the committees, you have spoken about the importance of the media, the choice and timing of programs, and the power that these programs have to raise awareness and promote positive images of children. So the children have talked about the importance of collaborating with key partners in government and society, including um, the media. And the children, you have noted that peer-to-peer -peer life skills education and related, uh, related training opportunities are beneficial to helping adolescents and young people make the successful transition from childhood to adulthood. I think that has been one of the foundational uh, uh, objectives of the Child Rights Committee is to help adolescents, that is 12 to 18 year old children, make a successful transition from childhood to adulthood. All of these ideas are supported by Article 12 and related articles in international law. So all of your ideas about the need to the need to um, work closely with your governments, work closely with your, with your families. All of these um, ideas, these aspirations of yours, are actually also included in international law. With this new guidance from the Child Rights um, the Committee on the Rights of the Child, UNICEF and government working together with you will be able to analyze the situation, make strategic choices for action, in consultation with you. And during the coming few years, as we plan the next phase of the, um, the social movement, really, for the realization of children's rights in Turkey. For those of you, I would like to say again, for the rest, but also the adults here, but to the children, those of you who are graduating from this program this year, there are a number of you who have reached the magical age of 18 and are moving on to start your adult life. Um, I encourage you to please carry with you into your work with youth organizations, into your work with civic organizations, your commitment to the promotion and the protection of children's rights. We have an important role to play as youth leadership and as, as young adult leadership here in, in Turkey. And we count on you to take forward into your adult life um, your commitments to the protection and promotion of the rights of children. For those of you who are just joining the committees, um, and those of you who will be continuing over the next few years. Um, this guidance provided by the Committee on the Rights of the Child will be very useful for you as a checklist in a way to help you strengthen your monitoring and your reporting um, uh, work uh, in your provinces and in your regions. Finally, I believe that with this guidance from the Committee on the Rights of the Child, um, we will be able to develop a powerful strategy that will support the social transformation uh, that is excellently spoke about that you and your government and political leaders are working for here in Turkey. And with that, I thank you very much.